Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter, and another video by request, I was asked to show how to use the microwave kiln, and just to kind of give you some tips and techniques, and um, I don't know, I'm not an expert at it, but I definitely have messed up enough glass that I can tell you what not to do, so let's have at it, right? Alright, so this is the microwave kiln. It is by Fuseworks, and just to give you a little bit of a reference here, this is, you know, it's wee, it's small. And the inner circle there on the kiln is where you would put your beads. So you're very limited in the size that you can make with a microwave kiln. So you can do probably like a pendant and two earrings at one time, or one large pendant, or four earrings. You know, you really can't do too much, but you can make it in your own microwave, and you know, that's pretty awesome. You can also use precious metal clay if you have it, um, or just regular glass. So when I bought the kiln, it was a Fuseworks brand, and it came with um, an assortment of glass and little Millie Fury um, circles, and you know, just a little instruction book and whatnot. And also it came with these uh, gloves, and you want to wear these when you take the kiln out of the microwave, or you'll burn your hands off. It'll be very, very sad if you do that. This is where I store my glass shards. Yes, how many people do you know that have glass shards storage? Glass shard storage? Say that five times fast. Uh, so inside, we've got, um, I've got it sorted by color. So when I go to make my beads, I can just grab out the colors that I want. If I'm going to do like a dichro bead, I might grab my clear, and then I would grab my uh, drawer of dichro glass. And um, in case you're not familiar with dichro glass, and I'm going to move the camera so you can kind of see my work surface. Um, it's got a very kind of foily, um, metallic um, quality to it. And I recently found out that you cannot fuse two pieces of dichro glass together or they repel each other and explode in your kiln. So there's a quick tip for you. Let's avoid the exploding. It's not that bad if it explodes. Honestly, it isn't. Um, if you do manage to cook something maybe a little inappropriate in your kiln, such as a glass-filled bottle cap, and you happen to get something stuck to the bottom of your kiln, and when you peel it off, you take a big chunk out, you can actually repair it. And um, what you will get is you'd want to just order a repair kit, and it's about 12 bucks, and it's by uh, Microkiln. It's a company out of Canada, and it's basically like, a, it almost is like joint compound, and you just kind of spackle it on and let it dry completely before you use it. Now, you're probably wondering what these kilns are made out of and if you can re replicate them at home. Well, I have a theory about what they're made of. I'm not 100% sure, but they feel like pumice. If you've ever bought a um, pumice stone to, like, you know, sloth off your, you know, dry elbows, your feet or whatever, that, that porous um, stone, that's what it feels like. It's very light. It's almost like styrofoam-like weight. It's so light. And um, I think there's some sort of granite or some sort of lining in here. So, you know, that's my theory about what it's made of. I think it may have some sort of polymer in it because after I used the spackly stuff on this, it dried up and shrunk just about to nothing. And so I tried to reconstitute it, but you can hear that it didn't reconstitute. I've just got chunks of the um, material with water in here. It never reconstituted. So I think there might be some sort of like a combination of like a pumice and a joint company gypsum sort of thing going on. I'm not 100% sure, but it's definitely clayey, stony goodness. I don't know. It's a hundred bucks, so I probably wouldn't risk starting house fire and exploding my microwave. i just buy the micro kiln. Um, this is a Fuseworks brand by Diamond Tech. There are other companies that make them. You can, you know, I've only used this, so I can't really compare and tell you what's better or what's worse, but there you have it. So when you make your beads, you take your um, kiln and you stack up your layers of glass uh, you want like two to three layers. You can put some little shards in and, you know, be fancy, mix your colors, you know, have a good time with it. And then you put the lid on, put it in your microwave, and you cook it for about three minutes, depending on how um, strong your microwave is. And then you take it out with the gloves and you take a quick little peek to make sure that it's like all red and you know, glossy and you know, it's rounded over, you don't see the sharp edges. And then you have to let it cool with it covered outside of the microwave on a, on a, a hot proof surface and you got to leave it alone for 30 minutes. Then you can uncover it and look at it. Don't touch it because you'll burn your hands off again with the hands and the burning and them off. Don't want that. Do not burn your hands off. Then you'll let that cool completely, which will take about another hour. And um, you want to make sure your kiln is cool before you put it back in and make another bead. So it's a good craft to do when you're kind of puttering around. Bad craft to do when the kids are running around because if they touch it, they will burn their hands off. So don't burn your hands off on your microwave kiln. You got that? Danger, danger, burning your hands off. Don't do it. 
All right, so let's uh, look down at the workspace. I'm going to show you how to cut some glass and how to stack it up to make your first bead. Here we go. When you first start to make glass beads, you're going to need to know how to cut glass. And you can use a simple glass cutter from the hardware store. Um, they're a couple dollars, not very expensive. And you just need a um, ruler. I like a nice thick one. This is just one that was free at my bank. And... Um, it's very simple to do. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to have, I'm going to make a pendant and some earrings and the earrings will kind of turn out similar to this, but different colors. Let me just bring it up a little bit closer. And the pendant, I want to show you a little difference between microwave wattages. My old microwave was very low wattage and you could see this pendant that I made here. I haven't attached a bale to it yet, but the glass remains very um, formed. You can see all the individual pieces of glass very clearly. It's almost like they're just tacked together. They're not coming off or anything. The edges are rounded, but you definitely still see the definite shape of every piece of glass that I layered before I cooked it. Now that's kind of a cool technique. That would be, if you have a new microwave, you'd want to use a low, um, like, longer time, lower percentage of power. So like a, you know, 50% power, 30% power, something like that. Now this, I did in my new microwave, uh, two minutes at 100% power, and I actually started off, I wanted to make a Christmas tree, but, and I had kind of arranged all my glass like a Christmas tree, and I cooked it for three minutes, and it was completely a blob. So that's kind of how when you cook it fast and quick. If you're doing shiny um, glass, like dichro glass with the foil in it, you have to cook it low and slow or it will snap apart or explode in the kiln. All right, it's not a big deal if it explodes, but you, you want to avoid it because you don't want to waste your glass. All right, so I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm going to make a pendant and you kind of hold your glass cutter straight up and down. I like these thick rulers because they kind of give you something to bear against. You only want to make one cut across and you should hear like a hissing sound. Not that sound, that sound was a dog barking. This is the sound you want to hear. Then you tap it and then you can snap it. Easy as pie. Smooth transition. And now we will just cut the uh, smaller pieces for the earrings and again I like to hold mine at an angle, but I guess you're really supposed to hold it up and down. Whatever you're comfortable with. It seems to work just fine either way. Tap it, and if you can't snap it, then put it on the edge of a table or your ruler, something with a nice hard angle, and just press against it to snap. Now, when you're cutting small pieces, you may want to use a tile nipper. And I'm just going to hold this in the middle of my glass and give it a squeeze, and it gives me a nice clean cut. So there I've got the base for my earrings and my pendant. And I want some layering glass, so I've got this orange, and it's already pretty small. So I'm going to just snip off a piece with my nippers. And these also can be found at the hardware store. I think they're about $17, so it's a bit of an investment. Um, you can play around with glass shards that are already small to begin with, and then like invest in the clippers when you get the hang of it, when you, uh, if you decide you want to do more earrings. That's not very symmetrical, but I kind of like the abstract look in my beads anyway. And maybe a little bit of green. So I'm just, since these are small, I'm just going to snip small pieces off. And the reason I have a paper down is so that I can catch all the glass shards and I can just kind of scrunch up the paper and throw it away so I don't end up cutting myself or having glass on the floor where other people can get cut by it. And then what I do is usually I just take this little velvet tray and, um, I just kind of set it on here while I take it upstairs to go fire it in my microwave. And, oh yeah, put a couple of those green pieces there. And then, when I'm ready to put it in my microwave, I feel like I need another something there because it's kind of boring. Let's just give it another little bit of green. There, that's kind of fun. It looks like a little face. All right, then um, when it goes into my kiln, what you want to do is put some kiln paper here. The kit would come with some kiln paper, but I found it was much cheaper to go to the stained glass store and just buy a big sheet of kiln paper. And then I ran it through my die cutter and made perfectly round pieces that fit my platform exactly. And then I would just stack my little earrings on and my pendant on. And by the time I get to the microwave, I'll have to restack it because it's going to fall off. But then I would just put it in my microwave like this, put the cap on, and then nuke it for about three minutes. Okay, we have the glass in the microwave now, and I'm going to very carefully put the lid on it, on the kiln, and I'm going to put it
put it in there for two minutes on high. Um, and you can see it's in the center. You want to use a turntable. Even if you have um, a microwave where you can remove the turntable and you put it right in the middle, you still want the turntable on. You don't want to have any hot spots. Um, as it heats up, you're going to notice a kind of glow from the center of the uh, kiln. It'll get kind of red and then it'll get yellow. And when it gets yellow, it has hit the full firing stage. And that's when you know that your bead is done. Since I have done some experimenting already with this microwave, I know that it's going to take me about two minutes on, on high for regular COE 96 glass. And that's technically, that's pretty much the kind of glass you're going to get if you buy glass at a stained glass shop. If you buy the glass that is sold for the microwave kilns, it'll be a COE 90 glass. It'll be a little bit more expensive and um, it actually might melt a little quicker. I'm not sure because I ran out of that kind of glass um, right after I got the kiln. I got pretty excited making beads and before I knew it, um, I was out of the glass. Now, I'm going to zoom in to that kiln and you'll see that there's a faint glow. See that, the, uh, the hole in the middle, the top of that kiln? There's a faint glow. So I know that the glass is getting heated up. That is the glow coming from the hot molten glass. So we only have about 35 seconds left. You can see the glow getting a little bit brighter. There's my dog in the other room barking. How lovely. Um, and I guess we just wait. back to the microwave just as it was shutting off and you can see the glow from the especially if I move over here you can see the glow at the top of the kiln there um, I had to run downstairs because I left my gloves and we all know how I don't want to burn my hands off while I am making glass beads so I've got my fancy gloves I feel like Michael Jackson except I have two gloves on and not one so it's absolutely nothing like Michael Jackson never mind all right so you're gonna be able to see that I hope you can see this I'm just gonna pick up the lid Look at that, oh, it is, I can't keep it off for too long or it's gonna cool off too fast. But you can, I'm out of breath from running up those stairs, oh my goodness. Um, you can see that the glass has fused. Now we just gotta set this on the counter somewhere um, on a hot, a hot tie, a tile so that it won't burn the counter. And we have to wait, we have to leave it for 30 minutes and then we will come back and check on it when it is cool. Okay, it is several hours later and the beads are cool and here's my kiln. Here, just to give you a size reference, these are my hands. See how big the uh, kiln is? If you're wondering what the loud noises are, my children are having some sort of bubble wrap obstacle contest upstairs and uh, there's bound to be some loud crashes and bangs and hopefully no crying. Um, but there is a responsible adult upstairs so I'm shooting this video. So I took the lid off the kiln and voila, we have some beads that are quite lovely I must say. So I'm just lifting them up, and this white residue on the back is the kiln paper. I'm just going to plunk this into some water and rinse off the kiln paper. And you can see it just kind of turns to powder after it's been fired. And you can leave that on there and just put another layer on top. That will give your kiln a little bit extra protection. And I'm going to rinse off my beads here to remove the water and I like to use ultra thin kiln paper because it's smoother and it leaves the back of my beads nice and smooth. The um, ultra, the thicker kiln paper can leave them kind of rough. So there's the pendant and here are the earrings. And I'm going to dry these off and we'll put a little epoxy on the back because I've already mixed up my epoxy so I kind of have to Go and glue it. An old towel here. Can you hear the thunder upstairs? My husband has just walked in and he's uh, wondering how I can shoot a video with all the noise upstairs. Alright, so we're going to put a little epoxy in, make sure that's really dry. I'm going to dry it on my sweater here. There we go. Okay. And I've got a bale for the back of the pendant. And this is the Gorilla Glue Epoxy that I showed you in my last video. And I think, I think this looks like a face. So I think I'm going to sew it with the eyeballs on top. It'll be kind of fun and weird. 
Well, that's all right. That's kind of cute. And I'm going to dry it upside down so the glue doesn't stick to the table or anything. And uh, this will be fully cured. My son is playing drums upstairs now. It's always an adventure here on these videos. He's uh, just started band last week. I've got an original soundtrack to this video. Oh my lord. <laughs> Never a dull moment in my household. <laughs> or a quiet moment, my husband says. <laughs> Some video magic when you can. Alright, and these will sit overnight to cure and dry. And there you have it. Beads made in a home microwave using a microwave kiln. Huzzah! Before you go, I want to show you what a piece of kiln paper looks like. Um, it's rolled up here in this tube. It's pretty big. It's about 20 inches by 30 inches probably. Maybe even it says 24 by 24 inches is how it comes. This is um, 1 16th inch fiber shelf paper and it's quite thick. And this is what I use when I want to put a string through a bead. So if I want to make a bead that I can put on a necklace like I did right here, um, when I fuse my layers of glass together, I will actually cut a sliver off of this paper. Just cut a, let me show you here. I'll just cut off a little sliver, about as big as I'd want my wire to be, kind of like that. And then I would layer that between my layers of glass. And that would give me a space that I can put a wire through. Um, on this, I did it between a clear layer and the uh, black and blue dichro layer. So you can actually see where the wire goes. It's a little bit lighter there. But on this one, I did it behind. I did a layer of light blue, a layer, a black dichro layer, and then a layer of clear. So it's hidden underneath the black light dichro layer. And um, so then you can't even see where the hole is, which is kind of nice as well. So there you go. It's just another way that you can make your beads in your microwave kiln. And that's it. I, I'm done, I swear. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.